You guys see this right here? Yep. Uh, looks like we've got a fence problem. They're just getting free grazing over here on this uh, on this property. This is ridiculous. Find them. Hey guys, Dusty Baker of Cross Timbers Vice, and welcome back to the channel. Hanging out with what I like to call the Texas 16. It's more like the Texas 12 now because we got those other four at the original place. Uh, I'm trying to get them back on their feet. You got the two bulls, and then you got the cow uh, that just really was malnutrition, just needs some nutrients and needs some, needs some groceries. Obviously, we got them vaccinated and got them going, so hopefully they recover. See, the thing is, is about bison. Bison take a long time to recover, not as quick as other animals. Uh, a lot of your livestock critters, uh, bison do take a long time to recover. Dakota is a perfect example of this. It's taken Dakota almost two years, and she's recovering finally, and uh, she hadn't had a baby in a year, so hopefully she gets that full recovery, and I can tell through her hair that she's looking more healthy. She's fuller now, and she's doing a lot better. So, uh, But these guys are still doing good. Um, uh, winter's uh, approaching here, and um, we're getting ready to put Big Joe and, and out with these guys and get them ready uh, for that. So got to get rid of a couple of bulls, and Big Joe's going to come in very soon and mix in. The calves and the yearlings will be separate. Actually, the yearlings I may put out in this pasture too. Um, we're just trying to acclimate these guys still. It's been a couple of weeks, so and they're doing great, but they just need some time and re for uh, recovery time to get them back on their feet, and uh, that's what we're trying to do. So anyways, point is yesterday, Brooks and I came over here, and there was cattle up here by the highway, and uh, this is not the first time we've come up here and seen cattle, and so what happened was... Um, uh, again, we ran into the cattle situation and, uh, this time there was, uh, this time there was about 14 cattle. And so, uh, quite a bit, a lot of cows and whatnot, but, um, so first thing we had to do is figure out where the heck they came from. Brooks, every time you come with me out here, we find cattle on the property. What the heck? Every time we come out here, there's cattle. Right here, on the highway. So now, I'm gonna go down in the pasture and check them because I gotta see where they are. They were up here close by the highway yesterday, but I'm, uh, I think I know who they are. I think it's the same uh, owner from last time, the last three we caught. So I gotta figure out where the heck these cattle are getting in. Where are they coming from and how are they getting in our property? So I gotta go figure that out. Let's go see what we can find. So I just kind of pulled down here in uh, kind of what I like to call a pecan grove, maybe. Pecan area. There's a lot of big pecan trees. Guys, I just wanted to show you this. This is a beast of a pecan tree. And I know the video doesn't do it justice, but this is a huge pecan tree. I think it's the biggest one down here. But I love these big old pecan trees. Here's some more right here. Um... But this is kind of a little pecan hollow, pecan grove area. I'm on the way to see if these cattle are back out, if the owner picked them up or not. So um, I just thought I'd share that with you. We'll talk more about pecan trees later and can't wait to show them all to you. But this is one of the areas that I've got to clean up. There's a, you can see a lot of brush, a lot of thicket back in here. Some Osage orange trees, which is this one that's down over here. Uh, that is a uh, also known as a bodark tree. Very tough wood. Uh, will wear your chainsaw out for sure um, in a heartbeat. Uh, but I hate those trees and they're exotic trees and they're just messy. So uh, eventually we'll get rid of those. But this is a... Uh, here you go right here. 
an old pecan right here. Um, hopefully enough moisture, it'll make a lot of pecans. Well, found another area where cattle could probably getting in. I don't see a lot of traffic right here. I do see some on that side, but it doesn't look like they've been crossing here recently. I don't see any tracks or anything, but you guys see this right here. Yeah, it's quite a gap there. Quite a gap. So, yep, if anything wants to get through there, they're going to get through there for sure. So, another place that uh, cattle can get through. This is getting fun. Well, I'll do some exploring. Discovered some hog wallers. You can see these old, say old, depressions right here. This is fresh. This is very, very recent, but I don't know if you guys, a lot of you probably know, depending on where you are in the country uh, or where your location is, but we do have feral wild hogs here and there's a lot of sun here along this pond they love these secluded ponds like this and uh, you can see their uh, tracks and this is the, where they root out and this is where they roll in the mud just like pigs always do so um exciting excited to uh maybe do some hog hunting out here and in case you guys don't know you can hunt hogs in oklahoma 365 days a year it's open these are exotic animals and uh probably a lot of you already know this anyways but they are exotic species here to this region uh just to north america or just to united states in general uh but they they're wild and they breed like three times a year they have lots of babies and uh <laughs> they wreak havoc on a lot of crops and a lot of farmers fields um rangeland and pasture land it's not that big of a deal to us but um it, they still can destroy a lot of your land so first time i've been back here and actually seen this so i was wondering if we did have hog sign if we did have hogs out here it looks like we do fresh sign also and, and another good indicator is let me show you this right here this is where they rub so you can see no no mud no mud and then there's mud right there in the middle. So they've been rubbing on this. And it's about to the top of my knee is where they've been rubbing. So you can kind of see the height of the actual pig that comes in here and rubs. And you can see they've got mud on this actual limb here too. What do you think? You like it? You like the water? It's pretty. There's no fence from there to here, so the big gap. Um, there is, there is hoof prints in the sand, and you can see it right here of them sliding down. You can see a lot of their hoof prints right here, coming off the hill and down here. So, yep, uh, looks like we've got a fence problem, which happens all the time. This kind of stuff happens all the time. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> part of uh, owning a new property that you haven't explored yet, which Maya and I are exploring today, which is fun, but uh, you find issues. Issue arose, we've got cattle on the property twice, and you wonder where the heck do they come from. Sometimes you gotta get on foot and find out yourself. This is the second whole, this is the second uh, problem that I've seen now uh here got to talk to the cattle owner um i think he's got them back i can't find him anywhere I've, I've searched and driven around the property he must have come and got them this morning because i found him yesterday evening um and my stepdad kevin contacted him so um but i've got to let him know about this and this is gonna be you know when when you share a fence with somebody uh, we're not even using this part of the property yet. We're using the front half of it. This is the back half of it. 
uh, the farthest corner of the property. But when you share boundaries with uh, another owner, you just hope that you can work well together. But his cattle are getting in on our property, and that's not good. So uh, I'm going to have to talk to the owner about the problems here in the fence. Um, a couple of places in the fence where his cattle are getting in. And uh, we got to get it taken care of because uh, we don't want to have these problems in the future. And obviously, there needs to be some work here. We've got an H post in it, like just non non-existent, pretty much, and a panel down. So, luckily, we don't have any bison back here, and, and and that's not a major issue right now. But it could be in the future when we start to move these animals back here. Uh, but we've definitely got to let him know, and uh, so he can keep his cows out and hopefully get this fixed. Hey guys, thank you for following. Thank you for watching. Just problems that you had to deal with uh, and uh, owning a new property. I, I can't wait to explore more of this property. And uh, guys, this humbles me so much and I'm so happy and, and excited to to have this with Marissa and Brooks, um, we're a little family, and um, to have this property and just being out here, hanging out and exploring with Maya. I used to do this when I was a kid. Um, I can't believe my mom trusted me, but when I was a munchkin, like four, five, six, seven, eight, not I mean my early young days, uh, we lived in 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 the woods, and uh, I. I I lived in the woods as well. I mean, I, I spent a lot of time in the woods exploring and just being a young, a young boy. And, uh, this kind of reminds me of that. And it's been a long time since I've been able to do this and, uh, it just kind of takes me back. And I just, I love being in the woods and I love finding and discovering new things. And so, uh, this kind of jogs my memory back, but I just appreciate, um, this, appreciate this land. And I am just thankful that my wife and Brooks and I can get this property and, uh, and have it. And I can't wait to share a lot of family experiences and, and a lot of family memories here on this property. And uh, I get to share it with a lot of it with you too um, as we grow and develop on this property. You know, just running water right here. So thankful for it. And uh, you just can't get this very often in life. Uh, in a lot of places and uh, very humbled to have this opportunity to get this place and uh, take care of it and make it a lot better. And uh, that's what we plan to do. So thank you guys for watching. If you haven't, follow us along, guys. We've got a lot of work to do and a lot of fun to have. I've been driving around honking for about 20 minutes all over this place and finally got him. Found him again. I thought the owner came to get him, but no, he did not. My neighbor sent me a text message to show me a picture of him at the other side of the property, at the back side of the property, and crap. I was like, okay, well, I'll be out there. So we are back. Cattle wrangling again. We got to get these cattle out of here. I don't know who the heck. Nobody's came to claim them, but we got to get these guys out of here. They're just getting free grazing over here on this uh, on this property. How do you not know as an owner, as a cattle owner, any type of animal owner, livestock owner, how do you not know if you have cattle missing? And I'm not, I'm not talking, we've got 14 animals out here. How do you not know if you, if all your cattle are there? Do you not go count them or you've got 14 missing? I mean, you can't miss them. They're, they're red. The red and black. Exactly. I'm going to see if I can catch them. We'll see. I'm going to pull out the old feed sack action here. You know, after I went through this once already, Brooks and I did. Kept it. See, look at him running. Look at that attention. Got your attention. Get your butt over here. You too. I see you hiding in the trees. This is ridiculous. 
and the, and the one in the back. Come on, you're dragging butt. Let's go. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Huh, three, six, nine. That's 12. Now the other day I had 14 and there were two calves. So we've got some missing. Oh, there's a calf right back there. It's 13. I see his little butt. He's back there. 13. Huh. Okay. Well, uh, there should be one more black calf the other day that I saw. Maybe not. This is ridiculous. They're watching every move I make. Let's go uh, see if we can uh, get them pinned up. And there's a holding area actually over here on this back side of the property. And uh, it's not very in good shape, but the question is, is water. So we'll see. Followed. I'm gonna shut this gate. Can. I'm not telling how long this gate has been open. You guys think there's cubes in there, don't you? Oh, there's one more. Let's see if he'll come in. There we go. Got him. Now I just gotta go back over there and shut that gate. Y'all sure are sweet. Thank you guys for cooperating. All right, well, I got them in there. Luckily, there's still gates here. Hold it here. Now I've just got to go down this fence line and up around this old corral system and make sure there's no gates open or anything like that. But I got them in here, which is nice. So thankful 
for feed sacks. I want to thank the feed sack company that made that feed sack. And I want to thank whoever owns these. They're used to that. So thank you, whoever owns them. Because nobody does. We think we do, but we've tried to call him and no response. Technically, after 30 days, they're mine. So we may be cattle owners. Who knows? I don't know. Maybe. But anyways, another thing too is I heard my neighbor told me, Richard told me that uh, you can actually pin them up if they're on your property, keep getting in your property, you can pin them up and charge the owner. So, I mean, make some extra money, right? You may have to do that. So, I'm going to go uh, figure out where, uh, see if there's any openings so these suckers don't get out. You know, you, you get up early in the morning, you start your day, and there's some, just some things that you... You just don't know what's gonna happen. And when you come out here to the property, you hope that they're gone and the owner got them back, but nope. Dusty's gotta come to the rescue. Oh, there's a gate open. Let's see here. So, this old barn. Oh. a second okay i got it that gate has been on the ground for a long time but i got it so my only next question they've obviously been in here look at them tracks it's an old old loft that they fed out of i like these old barns right here by the way still in good shape minus the feeding part but uh, they're in here. It's about an acre or two size. Look at all these weeds. Yep, I do have a lot of work to do. Cedar tree. God, you can barely see those cattle. Let's just hope there's no other openings and they don't get out. So, well, there you have it. I am a temporarily cattle owner. Not exactly what I wanted. But uh, I don't understand how you don't know where your animals are. One, you don't check them. Two, you're not a very good cattle rancher or farmer. If you've got 14 cattle missing and you don't even know it. So um, I know stuff happens and your animals get out. I, I know that. I know your animals get out occasionally. So these guys are getting free groceries out here on my property. Anyways, luckily they're pretty docile, easy to work with. So, obviously a feed sack does the job. So, well, we'll keep you updated. Hopefully we find out who the owner is. Find, we never get a hold of him. Kevin's tried to contact him. Kevin knows him. Kevin's tried to call him and left him voicemails and text messaging. He hadn't responded. So, uh, I guess once he figures out he's got 14, uh, I want to say bison, sorry. 14 cattle missing then uh, he'll come looking so they're gonna be here for now so anyways thank you guys for watching we'll keep you updated at cross timbers at bison ranch right here in southern oklahoma temporary cow ranch talking to say where are the cows at where are those cows at huh where are the cows at find them let's see if we can find them